everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as the Nurse with the Difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we're going to be talking about shock. What is shock? What are the various types of shock? What are the stages of shock? What is really happening in each stages of shock? By the end of this class, you will be able to answer all these questions. But before we go into details, kindly click on the subscribe button. Turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Alright, welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we are going to be talking about shock. What is shock? Shock can be defined as inadequate tissue perfusion. In simple terms, shock is what? Inadequate tissue perfusion. When we say inadequate tissue perfusion, we simply mean the body tissues are not getting enough oxygen. The body tissues are not getting enough oxygen to carry out its normal function. And when these body tissues are not getting enough oxygen, tissue hypoxia tends to result. And if not tackled, multiple organ dysfunction syndrome is going to take place. And if not attended to, death will be what? Inevitable. So whenever you hear shock, what should come to your mind is what? Inadequate tissue perfusion. What usually causes this inadequate tissue perfusion? Then that takes us to the various types of shock. The first we have here is the septic shock. As the name implies septic, it is all about infection. It is all about sepsis. Whenever you hear septic shock, just know it's as a result of what? Sepsis. It as a result of what? Infection. Then the second we have is hypovolemic shock whenever you hear hypovolemic shock it simply means there is reduced fluid volume it could be as a result of hemorrhage it could be as a result of bleeding but in all there is what reduced fluid volume then the other is cardiogenic shock in cardiogenic shock what is being affected is the heart the heart is so weak it is unable to pump blood into circulation so we say cardiogenic shock has taken place. All this type of shock will be explained in our subsequent class individually. Then the other, we have the anaphylactic shock. It's as a result of what? Allergic reaction. Then we have neurogenic shock. Neuro, the brain. It's as a result of what? Neuro damage. Then the last one we have here is obstructive stroke, stroke, shock, I mean, which is what? As a result of impending blood flow so no matter the cause of the shock it's definitely going to result in what tissue hypoxia if care is not taken it's going to result in multiple organ dysfunction syndrome and also what death then that takes us to the various stages of shock the first we have here is the initial stage followed by the compensatory stage followed by the progressive stage and followed by the irreversible stage. As the name implies, irreversible. It can't go back. It's going forward. There is nothing you can do about it. So we're going to be taking those stages one after the other. The first is the initial stage of shock. What is really happening in the initial stage of shock? Initial stage of shock Let's use hypovolemic shock as an example. For example, there is decreased fluid volume. There is decreased blood flow. What's going to happen is that the heart will not have enough blood to pump into circulation. The heart will not have sufficient amount of blood to pump into circulation. What will happen is that there will be what? Decreased cardiac output. There will be what? Decreased cardiac output. And when there is decreased cardiac output, that can't meet the need of the cells. The cells will not be getting enough oxygen. The cells will not be getting enough nutrients. And that will be very bad. 
the cells will be like, let us try and see other alternative. Let's see if other alternative will work. What will now happen? The cells switch from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration. Because the cells is trying to see how it can make things meet. So there's a switch from what aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration. That is the major thing. That is the most important thing that takes place in this initial stage of shock. There is a switch from what? From aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration. And when there is a switch from aerobic to anaerobic respiration, it leads to the production of lactic acid. It leads to the production of what? Lactic acid. In terms of lactic acid, our body has lactic acid. On a normal note, what happens is that there is an organ which is known as the liver. The liver converts this lactic acid into pyruvic acid. The liver converts lactic acid into what? Pyruvic acid, which is further converted into glucose with what we, what with the process known as gluconeogenesis that is what happens when the liver is working on the lactic acid normally but when there is excessive lactic acid in the body there is excessive lactic acid in the bloodstream and you know at this particular moment what is happening is that the liver is not getting enough blood so the liver will not be able to carry out that function of effectively converting this pyruvic acid, of effectively converting this lactic acid into pyruvic acid and also glucose. Let me go over this phase again. We said that when um, the cells are not getting enough oxygen, they can't meet their normal requirements, the supply cannot meet the cells requirements, what happens is that there is a switch from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration. And when that happened, there's a release of what? An end product known as what? Lactic acid. And lactic acid is what is normal in our body because the liver helps to convert this lactic acid into pyruvic acid. And this pyruvic acid is converted into glucose, which is used by the body. But in a situation where shock has taken place, the liver will not be getting enough blood supply. So the liver will not be able to carry out that function of converting lactic acid finally to glucose. What happens is that there will be excessive lactic acid in circulation. And that is going to damage the cells more. The cells are going to be damaged. The normal, normal serum lactate in the human body is between is a, is less than sorry is less than one millimole per liter, but lactic acidosis occur when you are having greater than four millimole per liter. And then that takes us to the second stage of shock, which is the compensatory stage of shock, as the name implies. Compensatory, the body is trying to compensate. The body is trying its possible best to rescue itself from further damage. So the first thing I want you to note is that at that moment there is what? There's a drop in the blood pressure and cardiac output. There is what? There's a drop in the blood pressure and cardiac output. Definitely when there's a drop in the cardiac output, there's a drop in the blood pressure. There's going to be a decrease in tissue perfusion. The tissues are not going to be getting enough blood. The tissues are not going to be getting enough oxygen. And once that happens, the body notices. The body senses that. What it does is to activate the baroreceptors. The baroreceptors are being activated and that leads to the release of the catecholamines, which is the epinephrine and the non-epinephrine. And what does this epinephrine and non-epinephrine does? These things, these two epinephrine and non-epinephrine, they causes vasoconstriction. They causes what? Vasoconstriction. And that is what we need. Because if there is a vasoconstriction, there's going to be what? An increased blood pressure. And there's going to be what? An increased heart rate. When that happens, the tissues will not be perfused. But one thing is certain, 
this oxygen, this oxygen that have been there, they have been taken to vital organs in our body. They have been taken to be the vital organs in our body, such as the brain and the heart. Because if there is no heart, there is no brain, definitely the body system is going to collapse. So at this moment, the blood that they are trying to save, they take it to where the vital organs in the body. So why they, they are busy taking this um, blood to the vital organs in the body? All other, those organs that are non vitals such as your gastrointestinal tract, the skin, the lungs, the kidney, are being deprived. Because of the fact that the GIT is not getting enough um, of this oxygen and not of this fluid is going to lead to slower activities of the GIT and it's going to lead towards decreased peristalsis movement and if care is not taken it can lead to paralytic illness that's the GIT then also because of the decreased supply to the skin it's going to lead to cool moist pale skin because the skin is not getting what enough oxygen. The body is trying to ensure that the vital organs, which is the heart and the brain, are the ones getting this fluid. And also there's going to be a decreased blood flow to the kidney. And when this happens, the kidney also has its own way of working in this compensatory stage. So what happens is that this um, decreased flow to the kidney definitely makes the kidney less perfused because the kidney will not be getting enough oxygen. And when the kidney senses this fact, the kidney notices that ah, there is a problem. So there is now activation of the RAS system, which is the renin aldosterone system. So with the activation of the RAS system, then a renin is converted, that's for renin leads to the formation of this angiotensinogen, angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, and angiotensin 1 later turns into what? Angiotensin 2. And it is this angiotensin 2 that also work effectively well in this compensatory stage. What this angiotensin 2 does, it has two major functions. One is that it helps in the release of this aldosterone. While the second is that major vessel constriction. The first, which is aldosterone, what aldosterone does is that it helps to keep sodium and water in the blood it helps to what it helps to reabsorb sodium and water it helps to ensure that there is sodium and water in the body and so when there is increased sodium and water in the body there's going to be an increased osmolality because of what the sodium that increased osmolality will increase the osmolarity of the urine of that patient having what shock so you know when there is increased sodium there's increased water in the body. Definitely there's going to be what? Increased venous return. So there's not increased fluid because excretion of water will be decreased because there's also release of the antidiuretic hormone. Take note of the fact of these things that there's a decreased flow of blood to the kidney. And when there is a decreased flow of blood to the kidney, it activates the RAS system in which renin is being produced converted to um, angiotensinogen, angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1, and angiotensin 1 is converted to what? angiotensin 2. And angiotensin 2 has a major role to play in the release of what? aldosterone, and also antidiuretic hormone. So this aldosterone that is being released helps to keep sodium and water in the body. So a lot of fluid is no longer going out through urine. So they do not help to increase um, the venous return to not help to increase tissue perfusion to not help to increase what cardiac output then also there's also major vessel constriction you know when there's vessel constriction both the arterial vessel constriction and the venous ve um, vessel constriction there's going to be what increased blood pressure there's going to be increased cardiac output and there's going to be what increased tissue perfusion you can see the um, the role the kidney has to play when it comes to what tissue perfusion and when it comes to what compensatory stage of shock then also there's something you also have to take note of is that another way in which the compensatory mechanism of the body works is that a drop in the BP or cardiac output will lead towards decreased arterial pressure right 
And when there is decreased arterial pressure, there's going to be what? Decreased capillary hydrostatic pressure. And when there is decreased capillary hydrostatic pressure, fluid will move from the interstitial space. Fluid will move from those interstitial surface into the intravascular space. And there will be what? Increased venous return. So each of these compensatory stages that are listed out help to what helps to what increase the venous return, thereby increasing cardiac output, thereby what increasing tissue perfusion. Then that takes us to the third stage of shock, which is what the progressive stage of shock. The third stage, as the name implies, progressive is going. It can lead to multiple organ dysfunction syndrome and finally lead towards the irreversible stage which is going to lead to death. So at this stage, the body can no longer compensate. The body is tired. The body is weak. So what happens is that there is no compensation. Definitely there's going to be a drop in cardiac output. There's going to be a drop in tissue perfusion. And also, the cells will not be getting what? Will not be getting enough oxygen. And when that happens, there's going to be what? Hypoxic injury. You get, remember in the compensatory stage, fluid, we were trying to move fluid as a result of vessel constriction from the interstitial space to the intravascular space. But in this progressive stage, the reverse is the case. Flood gates open. Fluid now move from the intravascular space to the interstitial space. As that is happening, protein is also leaving. There will be reduced fluid volume in the intravascular space. Because of the movement of fluid from the intravascular space to the interstitial space, there is going to be what? Mass edema. And as a result of all these things that have taken place, and a result of all, um, hypoxic injury, the organs in the body will be affected. The kidney will be affected. The heart will be affected. The lungs will be affected. The GI to the stomach will be affected. The protective, uh, what's protecting the inner layer of the stomach, of the GI to will not be there to protect it again. You now start having GIT bleeding. So all those things that are usually protecting all these things, they are all gone because there is not enough what, oxygen. So all your nervous system, your kidney, your GIT, your liver, the kidney, the lungs of that patient is going to be what? To be affected. And when it's not properly halted, it's going to lead to what? Irreversible stage of shock. It is also known as a refractory stage of shock. At this moment, there is nothing you can do about it. It's irreversible. You get it cannot be managed. You can see how critical it is. It cannot be but it cannot be managed. The stage, everything in the progressive stage become worsen. And what do you expect? It's going to lead to death. You can see shock is actually a very, very serious condition which has to be treated immediately. Because if shock is not treated immediately, it's going to progress and finally lead to what? Death. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching. I still remain Nurse Mercenary, popularly known as the Nurse with the Difference. Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead.